Okay, so new day. Got her tires back on. We got some brakes. She kind of steers. I think uh, she make this sucker fire, right? That'd be good. That's the plan. I uh, think I'm going to go rip that wiring harness down from upstairs. I think I'm going to go through this, tear everything out that doesn't need to be in there. And uh, start wiring the sucker up. Only makes sense. Okie doke. I'm going to start with this harness. This is my... Oh, spilled. Started with an Amazon harness. Um, not really going to link it because I don't know if this is really a good one. And it was the last one they had anyways, so... It's kind of a one-shot deal. I lucked out, I guess. Anywho, I'm going to split this up into usable chunks. So this thing's here, these are my flashers. This is gonna be everything that goes to the steering column. It does come with the headlight plugs and alternator and stuff like that. And uh, it's got the plug that goes into the GM column. And one of these generic 20 circuit manuals that seem to be the same for every harness I ever find. But anyways, cool. So I'm gonna string this out to dash, underhood, you know, uh, tail light, gas, fuel gauge, da 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 da. So, yeah. I'm going to do that really quick here. And then uh, kind of morph it over to the truck. So I got everything all grouped together here. <clears throat> this is all broken down. It's having a really hard time. The only thing with this is the writing on here was like super hard to read, but it is labeled everywhere. So I'm, uh... anyways, I got it broke down to, this is dash stuff, like your uh, gauges, things like that. This goes to the steering column. Uh, this is the tail light section. Or no, this is the taillight section, so your taillights, uh, fuel gauge, that stuff. This is like for headlights, all that jazz. Uh, this is under hood, so your crank, your battery, all that stuff. So, yeah, you break it down manageable. I just take out what I'm not using out of the stuff. So that's on the side I can use for other things. This one I'll probably run for the fuel. It was wired for the fuel pump, but I'm going to wire this to work off the computer to run the fuel pump. So... Yeah, so now I gotta get that in the truck. Alrighty, we have, I've got my wiring slung out, I gotta kinda clean this up yet, but we have 
This is my tail light, tail harness, my lights and signals, and my engine vitals. Um, I peeled out my temp and my oil gauge wires, so they're just spares because I'm running mechanical gauges on this one, so cool. <clears throat> on the inside, I am just fishing things through. I got stuff hooked up to the column, that's good. I gotta figure out, uh, rig up a brake switch yet. This is all accessory stuff, so this is, I don't know, like wipers, heater, all this kind of stuff. And uh, this is for the courtesy light, brake switch. This is all my vitals, this is all my dash stuff, signal lights, all this stuff. Everything coming through here is gonna be for like the light switch. So I'm just gonna clean this up, run everything through, and uh, we'll be back. This isn't very exciting. <laughs> So we're doing, well this one is a drive-by wire, so this is your gas pedal, which is like an electric doodad. Uh, I just made this plate to bolt the pedal to, to which I can kind of stab in the proper area that it needs to go, and I can weld that bracket into there, and then that gives us our go pedal. Um, from there I'm going to wire this thing out through the firewall to get to that, what they call it, attack module. Which is this, which is basically your gas pedal controller. So this is just gonna get mounted somewhere. And it just needs to, the computer needs to get to it and it needs to get to the gas pedal. The only cool part about this is it's super easy to hook up cruise control and stuff when you do that uh, from this plug you only need like two wires to set your cruise control uh, one would turn it on so it just needs power and then the there's another one that you resume and your set they just need if I remember right I think they just need a momentary um, 12 12 volt and then you can actually have whatever you want like your your set and your uh, resume anyways for now I'm just setting up the pedal and then I'm going to get to this jumble of wires. <laughs> but we don't need half of this. We're only going to need a couple things out of this. A couple things out of this and a couple things out of this. Well, I think that's as far as I'm going to get tonight. Basically, I've strung the wires out. So I have everything from my headlights and my signals are there. Same on the other side. Uh, the engine bits, this stuff here is going to power up the fuse box. And uh, there's my battery. Um, yeah, I'm going to break this down tomorrow. But it's really, really simple. I think there's only three wires I need out of this. Of all of these, you only need three and it should run. Um, you do have to power some up out of here for the transmission and it might piggyback to here I can't remember but I'll go through it tomorrow no biggie and uh, I should have pretty much everything in the cab done ish other than I gotta do my brake switch yet but uh, I have everything kind of run and strung up right now I have pulled my wires to the back not really they're just kind of hanging right there but I can get inside the cab and kind of run it down this panel is so large that I think I'm going to have to extend the taillight wiring because I don't think it's going to get far enough. I think it's going to stop around here somewhere, which is not cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, not sure if I'm wearing all the taillights or I'll leave that to whoever decides they want to buy the darn thing. They can do it. We'll see. We'll see where I get. Looks like quite the gong show going on in the back here anyways with all the lights.
Anyways, that's it for tonight. That's kind of helping the boy wonder to get his truck going. So he's gotten a lot of stuff done, so that's good. And uh, yeah, I guess tomorrow he should be pretty close. We should see if she uh, should be able to take her for a drive, maybe. I don't know. We're hoping this weekend they go take her for boot. He's trying to finish up his gas filler yet on it, and then uh, I think we have the dash all done. Yeah, it's just, it's so, it's all the little junk, right? Anyways, till tomorrow. Okay, before I do the wiring, I may as well start with my rad. I'm gonna have to solder in a, a line for this, this purge line. So I'm just gonna clean that up quick and then I can make some mounts for this rad after. But uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Just drill, solder, done. I think it's a copper rad. Should be a little easier for my welding skills. <laughs> Okey-dokey. So we got that one in. Uh, it went a lot easier than it looked. <laughs> Anyways, that one is, like I say, for that purge line. So we have that, our upper, lower rad hose. Somebody's obviously, like, this thing's been modified. I don't know what was there originally. And I think this spout was over here originally. But anyways, should work fine. Now we can kind of slip it in there, punch some holes, bolt her in. Uh, I did do some testing. And the uh, mechanical fan would work, but it's so close to this this uh, hose here, I wouldn't be able to get a hose clamp and stuff on, so I'm just gonna run an electric fan on this one, so we'll go full Monty and show everything with this one, how to uh, wire this thing up. Right, I am gonna try to explain everything I just did here. Uh, I kind of just scoobied through everything, but I got everything labeled up and I cleaned out. So you have to imagine what I'm doing right now though is for a 2003 and up, because uh, it's drive by wire. So this is not gonna apply to, it sort of loosely does, but it doesn't really apply to the uh, the old, the, the older stuff, 99 to 2002, I think. Drive-by cable. So anyways, I cleaned all the wiring out of the back. I pulled anything I don't need. So I'm using the stock computer out of the Silverado pickup. Um, when you flip it over, I'm basically gonna just explain the bits you need to make it run with the automatic transmission. So there's an extra step with the automatic transmission. But anyways, when you look at the back of this fuse box, this is when you flip it over, uh, the plugs are to the front. You can see there's power, there's a 12 volt here, and there's a 12 volt up here at this pin. Those go to the battery, uh, to which on this side I have this plug, to which just runs down here and then runs up to the battery. <clears throat> From there, I have this pin, here, which we're going to call this, this is A, and it's A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A9 is a pink. That one goes to your keyed power. So when you turn your key on, this would be like your coil wire. That one goes there. Uh, I'm taking this one a step further. If you go to A3, there's this yellow wire, and this is what's going to trigger the starter. Because I'm using the transmission and stuff, from the LS, the uh, 4L60, 
uh, which has the neutral park reverse all that so this is basically if the neutral safe as long as it's in neutral or park I can fire it up with this wire so that's why I'm doing that if you're doing this bolting it up to a turbo 350 you only need this wire and this wire you can go into this harness like in this mess see this big fat purple wire you can just run your this is a start this one's using the neutral safety and all that jazz and it's um, it's running the relay to start run the starter but this one is just straight hard wired right to the starter so essentially you do that and then on this plug you have uh, this is for the um, fuel pump so this bottom wire up here runs the fuel pump the only other thing you have to do if you're running like a turbo 350 or a manual transmission or something with this and because I'm running that tack module I'm running uh, uh, the, the drive-by wire this electric throttle is in this plug there's a pink wire so I have that one piggybacked in because we have to have well we used to at one time our public insurance forced us to uh, uh, have like a mobilizers on our stuff so I piggybacked it into a wire up here I think it's this one yeah it's that one I just piggybacked it into the wire that they snipped which was just for the PCM so anyways the the pink wire that's in this they call this a C100 plug there's a pink wire and that's the one that runs the throttle so other than that that's all you need to do to run this setup with a turbo 350 transmission uh, because I'm running the the four-speed automatic that comes with this there's like Two extra wires you have to deal with well it's it's actually one it's normally up in this area up here there's a, a double pink wire and uh, it sits uh, this is a b c d e 11 is where this wire normally goes you have to just give it 12 volt you can patch it into any of these pink wires it'll work I ran it down here to where the AC used to be so it's fused so that's the only other thing you had to do now with those that said that's all you got to do and this sucker is gonna she'll start up and run and drive that's all you got to do with that this wire I just temporarily ran this this is my uh, fuel pump I temporarily ran it to the back and am uh, running my fuel system off of that which is a super ghetto right now I have my fuel tank just grounded to the chassis and just this wire hot wired over to the pump but uh, that's all you got to do with that it's uh, other than unlocking the computer I'll show the basic things I turn off but I'm not gonna really get into it as far as if you have this motor transmission if this is two-wheel drive let's say and you got the fuse box try to get all the wires like the middle plug is all the wiring for your computer and stuff but these ones here if you can get these two plugs with it even with the mass of wires that I had that I all cut out I just took them out for a cleaner. You could just snip them. It's not a big deal. But to make it run, you just want your fuel pump, your key power, and your battery. And then you need somebody, if you don't have HP tuners, you need somebody to turn off the vats. And that's that's the security system. That's the extent that you need. And then this sucker's pretty much just like rocking a, a small block at that point. It's 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 really that simple. If you run this, this is kind of excessive because there's an insane amount of things in here that a feller does not need. Like this is the fuel pump relay, and I think there's like four or five fuses. So rest of this is like really nonchalant. It's too hard to trace out. I can't find a proper mapping for the stuff that if a guy wanted to reuse some of it, eh, it's too hard. I think anyways. Um, but with those couple things done, so again, I have battery power here. So I ran, did I explain it right? I think I did. I ran like this has to be 12 volt and then this one has to be 12 volt. Maybe I didn't say that, but this is again, 2003 and up. And then this is battery. Oh, let me rephrase that again. This is 12 volt key, uh, all the time. This is key. So this would be like your coil. Uh, this is starter, but you could use the purple. And then this is a fuel pump. So with those few things done, I added the extra one because I'm running the automatic. 
but we click the key, we'll hear the uh, fuel pump run. We just heard that, and then we crank it. And that is it. She's a runner. <laughs> I'm not running it very long because I noticed, you remember way back when I was saying I, uh, I bumped that transmission line down there? Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's clearly become a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever I'm gonna have to take that line off and fix it I gotta put a trans cooler in here anyways so this doodad I just looped the lines eh, didn't work out for me no big deal so so once that was all said and done you see me uh, messing around in here so there's a again 2003 and up this um, they call it a blue and a green plug so I when I unlocked the computer, I turned on my electric fan. I could run the mechanical fan, but it's so tight, it, uh, it'll hit my lower rad hose. So I'm not going to cut fins or do anything weird. I'm like, the wiring harness had a spare relay, so I've wired that all in. So I'm just going to run an electric fan. So when I unlocked the computer, I just turned on my electric fans. But because this came out of a just a half-ton truck, it didn't have, it wasn't uh, pinned up for the electric fan. So I just have an old plug from a cruddy old computer that I cut off. And on the blue plug, if you go to 42, you got to add a pin in there. So I just took one out of a junky old one, added the pin. It runs the negative side of the relay to which that when the cooling fan needs to turn on, it'll send a, a negative signal, turn the relay on to which then I will basically run my fan. That's the fan will turn on. I think I set it to, I'll show you after. I set it to 205 and it's gonna turn off at 190 or 195 or something like that. That's how I set that up. But uh, yeah, everybody looks at these, that they're really complicated. I personally, I like these. When I do my 54, I'm gonna change this out and I'm gonna know, uh, I'm actually gonna, what they call thin the harness and uh, I'll explain that in a little bit here, but I'll kind of show it when I do my 54. But essentially, they just pull this plug out, and then they, they, they slink these wires out and to a separate fuse box, uh, which is like, they call it a thin-down harness. I don't take it to the extreme of pulling the wires I don't need. I just, I don't know. This wire goes from, like, this thick to, I don't know, if it's half the size. I don't know, but I don't really worry about that. Anyways, I'll show you what I do on HP tuners yet. So hopefully you can see this, but this is like kind of a comparison, but it's kind of like a really crappy comparison. All I did is I turned off VATS. So on HP tuners, I basically went into the system. And then this VATS control, it's usually had serial. I turned it to none. I left this park neutral da 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 in because uh, it uses that signal on the transmission to uh, uh, like, because I'm using the, the starter, that yellow wire. If it's in, not in park or neutral, it won't let me start the truck. So that I, have, uh, I have that. And then under the engine diagnostics, we have... Uh, where does it show? Uh, if I go down the list. Because it's a newer one, I didn't change a lot of stuff. I, uh, you can see everything in the green. So basically that's just the rear O2s. I turn those off on both sides. And... There's the EVAP stuff. So you remember way back, I uh, kind of cut all that junk out from in front of my fuel tank. So I turned all that stuff off. And I think that pretty much covers it there. The uh, If we go back to system, I did the VATS. And then on fans, this was turned off because it's a pickup truck. So I put on two fans. You can do two. Really, it's just the one. So it's 205, 195 is what I set my fans to turn on. So it basically runs that relay. You can have a second stage of fans if you want. I turn them on, I don't have it hooked up, but it's uh, you'd find in the wiring harness for the blend door, which would be by where your mass airflow sensor would be. There's a plug there. And you could use that one to run a relay again for a second fan. So if you did put AC or something in, and it got to, like for me, if it gets to 210, I would set it to turn on at 210 and turn off at 200, and then this fan would take over after that. So that's, that's kind of the, the short version of what you do at HP. I don't know, most guys are turning it off. Most guys, all they ask for is I want the vats off and then I'd like to turn off the rear O2s and that usually pretty much covers it. 
but a lot of people don't have HP, so this is probably what a feller would pay somebody to do, but the other harness stuff is pretty simple. All right, so now that the computer is unlocked, you, the bases there will run this with a Turbo 350. The exception is if you're running the 60E, like I said, you gotta send power to that A, B, C, D, E11 wire. Again, I brought that down to here, which runs with the AC for power. Um, in here, there is the blue wire, which was, which one was that? This was A, A10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A ten gets you this blue wire. So this one you need to run to your brake switch. And then if you're running cruise control off this plug, you want to do the gray one. They can both go to the same brake switch. But this is not the typical brake switch where you push it and you get uh, uh, 12 volt power to run to the back. These need 12 volt power all the time. And when you push the brake switch, it t cuts the 12 volt. So that'll turn off the torque, the lockup converter. So the blue one is for just the transmission side. The gray one is if you're gonna do the cruise control, like the gray on this black plug, will do the cruise control. So if you do set your cruise and you push the brake, it turns the cruise off. You need this, the, the blue one, to turn off the lockup. These are not relevant, you don't care about it, or this E11 plug does not matter if you're just rocking the motor and you're not using the uh, the automatic transmission that came with it. So, just a mental note. Again, too, even you don't need this yellow wire, you can just run the blue, the purple wire in this harness. You can just key that, it'll be fine too. Anyways, like a breakdown of this black plug, like I said, the white is uh, tack, all this kind of jazz. If you look on here, that's called the C100 plug. And if I can get you in there, you can kind of see the colors always coordinate to what they are. Like dark green and white vehicle speed, that would be like your actual speedometer. Uh, engine speed, white, that's tachometer. Um, so here's your cruise control set, so that's the gray with the black. You know, it kind of breaks down, there's your cruise control. See that gray I told you about? That one's just for your brake switch. It doesn't say that, but that actually is your brake switch. All right, here, your brown and white is your message indicator light, to which is a ground. So if you want to have a bulb on your dash to light up when you uh, uh, want your check engine light to come on, you send power to the bulb and this thing grounds that bulb. Um, this dark green is for your serial port. So that is like for your, your, your reader, your, uh, where do I have one? If you want to hook a scanner to your motor to find out what's going on, you'd hook it up to one of these ports. So. Yeah, it's kind of the GIF. This is not really relevant at all. You don't need any of this. Because if you're running a manual transmission or um, a turbo 350 or something, then the vehicle speed and none of that stuff is going to matter. So, I mean, I'm hoping that makes sense for folks. Like it's really simple. I cutted a lot of it out so you see there's not a lot. This is basically all the motor stuff. This is out of this whole plug. I took everything out. The only thing I left was this gray down here and that runs the fuel pump. The computer tells the pump to turn on and off. On this particular one, this one, and this one is battery. This one is ignition. So battery, like I say, I just loop it over to this stud. So from the battery, goes to this junction box. I just piggyback in there, run there, run those two powers to there. I have a third one in there, but that's to run the relay to run my electric fan. So, I don't know. Hopefully I made that simple for folks. I don't know. It's kind of simple for me, but I always go back to my cheat sheets when I don't know. To which was, uh, what's the website? It's lt1swap.com. That is basically, Got the Bible for figuring all this stuff out. They break this down in very simple. They got pretty much how-tos if you want to do standalone. This one, I have never did the fuse box till a couple ago and it's kind of like pretty easy peasy. 
anyways we got to go on we got to do some other stuff to this one yet i'm going to uh i got my rad started so i got to do my rad i got to do a trans cooler i got to fix that line um figure out some ducking see if i can use the stock box i don't need that uh ugly box anymore i don't need that thing because i ran this up to my rad so essentially this hose doodad i can cut this just run my heater hoses like normal uh it breaks yeah like i don't know we got this one running i got to do some wiring cleanup yet but i think the next one we should be able to at least just kind of put around the yard with this thing as soon as we get some coolant and a few things like that in there but anyways guys I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. I think this has gone kind of long enough. But hopefully I explained this that made sense to folks. And if it hasn't, then I don't know. This is probably not going to be a good video for you. <laughs> it wasn't that exciting because it's just a lot of wiring stuff. But that's kind of how she goes. We do have to get some gauges in it yet. I have my gauges. I'll have to make some filler panels and uh, set them all up on the motor. But uh, once that's done, then we can kind of get on to the fun stuff. So I still got to mount the running boards. I, uh, I want to widen these fenders yet. Because you can see that the wheels just stick past. So I'd like to widen the fenders up so they cover the wheels. Give it even a little bit extra. In case a feller wants to do some kind of an aftermarket wheel, they can. Um, but between the running boards, do those. So I'm going to do back and front. Like the back's cover, not too bad. But I wouldn't still wouldn't mind adding an inch or so to it. The front, about an inch, inch and a half. It gives you some decent coverage. Because, I don't know, the aftermarket wheels aren't going to be much different than these, I would imagine. But, uh, yeah. We got some progress. Got to fix some stuff, but we got progress. Anyways, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Later.